Incredible Tale of a Water Warrior The Western Ghats runs north to south along the western edge of the Deccan Plateau facing the Arabian Sea. These hills cover 1,60,000 square kilometers and form the catchment area for complex riverine system that provides a water source for almost 40% of India. The majority of streams draining the western ghats join rivers that carry a large volume of water during the monsoon months. However, these hills at the top have grassland ecosystem and hence water does not stay. Instead, it runs down deep inside the earth without any bottlenecks. It is challenging for anyone to carry out agricultural activity at these higher grounds of a hilltop. But one man defies this logic and stands tall against all odds to eke out a living. This is the story of the incredible Mahalinga Naik who has single-handedly turned a barren land on the hilltop into a fertile green garden. This is the story of a modern-day Bhagiratha whose never-say-die attitude has brought water to this improbable place. Situated at about 52 kilometers away from Mangalore on the Vitla Kasargod State Highway, Adyanarka is a sleepy village with bare minimum facilities. If you take a left turn from Adyanarka and trek for a kilometer on the muddy road and then take a right turn to the hilltop, you will find Mahalinga Naik's two-acre plot and his humble house. Today, this hilltop looks lush green with crops of arecanut, coconut, pepper and vegetables. But this was not the case when Naik first stepped on to this barren rocky hilltop 40 years ago. At a first glance, 72-year-old Amai Mahalinga Naik looks like any other farm laborer from this area. But make no mistake, this erstwhile farm laborer is not an ordinary person. The kind of work he has done in the hilltop of Adyanarka, no other person could ever even dream of. Once a landless farm laborer, Mahalinga Naik in three decades has turned out to be a model farmer worth emulating because of his brave and unrelenting efforts. And the icing on the cake is that he never considers it as a big achievement. For him, this was the only way he could survive. During the 1970s, Devraj Aras, the then Chief Minister of Karnataka, introduced the Revolutionary Land Reforms Act, which made the tiller as the owner of the land. At about the same time, a local landlord named Mr. Mahabala Bhatta helped him get the two-acre plot on the hilltop of Amai from the government, which was not fit for anything, forget agriculture. The terrain was full of dry grass and bushes and virtually there was no trace of water. Any other person could never even have had the thought of starting out agriculture in the barren and sloped plot. But for the eternal optimist and determined Mahalinga Nayak, this was an opportunity to build his own life and to work for himself. All this while, he was working for others as a tree climber, tiller and as a freelance harvester. But he puts in hard work and he could grow crops in his own plot and reap the benefits for himself and his family. Inspired by this thought, Nike first built a very humble kacha house by leveling a chunk of land at the hilltop. The land is characterized by uneven surface and slopes which is practically not fit for agriculture. Even the fellow villagers discourage Naik not to take up such futile exercise. But Naik continued his quest nevertheless. In order to make it convenient for farming, initially he began leveling the land into large flatlands in steps 
and then build stone support structure like a fort wall with locally available laterite stones. Each flatland has got a laterite stone structure below it to lend support even during the rainy season. The building of the stone structure itself was another inspirational story altogether. Mahalinga Naik used to trek down twice a day to nearby farms located in the valley below his hilltop to carry out odd jobs. After finishing work, on his way back, every day he would bring two laterite stones. Once in a fortnight, when around 30 stones are accumulated, he would build a compound-like support structure. This way, with single-minded and dogged determination, he has single-handedly built not only this structure, but the entire plot slowly but firmly. Altogether, this 2-meter height structure is extended to around 250 meters in length, which may be 3 lakh rupees worth labor work in today's estimation. After settling down on top of the hill and leveling the same into small flatlands for cultivation, his biggest worry was irrigation. There was no trace of water in the entire hilltop and this was also not the ideal place for agriculture either. There were no examples to follow. When he came here, he had not even thought of water source, which may sound impractical. Initially, he would go down the hill to fetch water for drinking, farming as well as for other domestic use. As the adage goes, when the going gets tough, only the tough get going. Mahalinganayak hit upon the idea of the tunnel. Tunnel as a source of water is not new to coastal region, especially the landscape spread across Witla to Kasadgo, in which there may be around 10,000 tunnels providing water for irrigation as well as domestic use, according to Mr. Sri Padre, development journalist and the editor of Adike Patrike, based in Kasadgod, who has done extensive work on water harvesting and agriculture. What Na uh, Mahalinga Nayak has achieved in that hilltop, I would like to call his achievement as, uh, you know, one-man army on a hilltop. Uh, the kind of uh, development he has made in that uh, hilltop, it is unparalleled because uh, you can see even today all the neighboring lands grow only the hay, the fodder and nothing else. It was the same, it was like the same situation when he stepped there around 30-35 years ago. You know, throughout this career, he almost he worked single-handedly. At times his wife joining him, at times um, children joining him. But the major work and optimism, planning, everything is Nayak's. Uh, he, uh, actually, people ridiculed him that when he started digging his first suranga, uh, people ridiculed that uh, it won't be possible to get water unless one pisses there. You know, first one, two, three, four, all the four surangas were uh, failures. But he was never say die. He tried his fifth and the fifth suranga he got water. And interestingly, suranga is the only water harvesting structure which would give you water for a common man at that height. No other water source is practically possible. And the fact that Suranga is a sustainable water source is proven because it is only Suranga which has kept, uh, which has developed a green orchard there and kept Nayak's life sustaining. Although Mahalinga Nayak is illiterate, he was quite practical and commonsensical when he had thought about tunnels as a source of water for his farm. Although tunnels themselves are not rare and special in this region, the real story is not about tunnels, but the manner in which Mahalinga Naik dug them out single-handedly in three decades without losing hopes, even after repeated failures. Yes, you heard it right. This frail-looking 70-plus man single-handedly dug out the tunnel in his farm in search of water. One fine day, 
He hit upon the idea of digging the tunnel in his plot during the afternoons as harvesting work he used to go for as a freelancer usually would be over by then. So, every day after returning from work, he would dig the tunnel. Sometimes the digging would go on until midnight with oil lamp for illumination. His wife Lalita would look after the children and Nike would continue his digging work. In this way, day in and day out, he went on digging for months and years together. By the time he dug the first tunnel for about 30 meters, almost a year had passed and water was not to be found. The first tunnel was a big failure. Unruffled by the ridicules of fellow villagers, he began digging the second tunnel the next year because he thought the place identified for the first tunnel was wrong. So he wanted to give it another try in another place. But to his bad luck, the second tunnel was also a failure. Second, third and fourth tunnels failed miserably to yield any hint of water. A neighbor hurt him by saying, you will get water only if somebody pisses from the top. Anybody else would have lost the hope at this stage. But not Nike. He went further up the hill and started digging the fifth tunnel. Ultimately, his perseverance had to pay off. Even the destiny had sided with him. Lady Luck smiled on him and he struck a good amount of water source in the fifth tunnel. Nike single-handedly dug the soil, put it in the basket and on his knees transported it outside, undoubtedly a strenuous work for which he was all prepared. When the fifth tunnel was dug for around 20 meters length, Nike found out that water was dropping from the top. So a crazy thought struck Nike's mind. He thought he would go three meters up and start digging. But he always had the fear of land sliding because the soil at this place was not so firmer compared to other parts of the land. But a determined Nike dug the tunnel in a sitting posture for around 20 meters and his intuition proved right. This turned to be the biggest turning point in his life. As he found a good water source, he dug the tunnel for about 70 meters length. Once the water was assured, he planted 300 arachnid plants, 40 coconut plants and some pepper vines. All are yielding now. This tunnel is the major source of water for the farm as well as domestic use. The water from this tunnel is stored in a 15 feet deep and 30 feet diameter water storage tank. From here, the water is distributed through gravitational force with sprinkler technique to the three steps plot. The upper part is irrigated through hose irrigation system. Nike did not stop after the successful fifth tunnel. He continued to dig two more tunnels, out of which one tunnel right behind his house had a water source. Nike has built a 12,000 liter cement tank to store this water. Once the tank fills in six days, the excess water is distributed for the plots below. This water is also used for domestic purpose. In 2002, Dr. Varanashi Krishnamurti from Varanashi Research Foundation, based in Adyanarka, who are into organic farming, in order to popularize organic methods of farming, started conferring awards to progressive farmers of the region. Till then, unknown to outside world, Mahalinga Naik came into contact with Dr. Krishnamurti. VRF conferred Farmer of the Year Award to Naik in 2002. Discovered and initially promoted by Mr. Krishnamurti, Naik went on to win Krishi Pandita Award from the Government of Karnataka. Various organizations have also felicitated Naik for his stupendous achievements. Uh, every day he used to work in the morning hours. Being a arachnid or coconut plucker, uh, his timing was morning working and half an hour, afternoon 
uh, it used to be off because it was a uh, uh, hard work. So, uh, Maling Naik was working in the morning hours in uh, neighborhood you know, with the uh, for the coconut and coconut farmers. Then in the afternoon he was digging uh, the tunnel uh, for the uh, to find the water source. So th this work continued for years together. I think he has dug more than uh, uh, eight tunnels. Out of that, only three gave him some good source of uh, uh, water. Uh, with that uh, water source, uh, he started uh, uh, agriculture activity. Now, Naik lives with his wife Lalita and youngest son and daughter-in-law in Amai. His elder son lives in a separate house with his family in the same land. He works as a farm laborer and younger son works as an assistant in Ayush Hospital Puttur, a nearby town. His daughter, who used to support for paddy cultivation earlier, is now married with three children and lives in the nearby village called Bolnado. Naik is a touch disappointed that his children are not interested in farming. He wanted his two sons to continue to live and develop this beautiful plot. At the twilight of his life, it remains to be seen whether his sons retain the beautiful garden that Nayak has created at this hillock in three decades with his blood and sweat. However, his single-mindedness, hard work, perseverance and the never-say-die attitude in achieving smaller goals which in the long run yield bigger results are truly inspirational for generations to come.